Today I'm going to be building a shelf unit to go inside the understairs cupboard and I also want to make lots of little bits and pieces to fill it with. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is work out a size for my shelf unit. So I've got the wall here and I'm going to begin by taking the height. So I want the shelves to come above the height of the door so that when the doors open you can't see any sort of area above the top of the shelf. So I'm going to make it a little bit taller and take it up to that sort of strut there above the door. So I'm going to make it 160 millimetres high and that's about six and a quarter inches. And then for the depth, I'm going to measure this area here. So this side comes right up against the wall. So from there to where the door begins is 35, but I'm going to make it 33, just so I've got a little bit of give in there and it's not going to be too tight. And then for the actual width of the shelf unit, I'm going to deduct the width of the actual wall, which is 10 millimetres, from the width of the stairs. And I'm taking the measurement actually from the wall because obviously the stringer won't be on the inside. So I'm going from the wall to the edge of the stairs there and that's 68 millimetres. So minus, minus that 10 millimetres is 58. So I'll make it 55 millimetres wide. And again, I've got that three millimetres there then for a little bit of give so that it's not going to be too tight in there. OK, so I've cut the pieces for the shelf unit, sticking with a really simple design. So back, sides, top, bottom. And then I've got four shelves here, which I'll space evenly along the back, which will create five shelf spaces. And each shelf space will be about 30 millimetres, so I'll have over an inch. Nice big deep shelf that I can cram lots of bits in. So when you're designing your shelf, Get your measurements first, and I haven't given a cutting list for this just because the chances of your understairs shelving unit being exactly the same as, as mine is going to be pretty remote. But I'll just sort of tell you how to cut your pieces. So get your height, width and depth as I have. So I'm going to place the top and bottom on the inside of the back piece. So your back and your sides can be the actual height that you want your cupboard to be. Normally, for a sort of decorative appearance, I would then attach another top and bottom piece, which I would bevel to make it look pretty. But in this, it's just really simple. So the top will sit in there, will be enclosed by the sides, as will the bottom, and then each of the shelves. So cut the pieces to the height. The side pieces can be the depth because your back piece will be enclosed within them. So the only thing you need to think about your width, you need to deduct the width of your or the thickness of your side pieces. So I want my shelf unit to be 55 millimetres wide. So I've cut my back 52 millimetres wide and then add on the three millimetres, which is the thickness of the two side pieces. That makes the 55 millimetres. Hope, hope that makes sense. Hope I didn't just sort of um, waffle too much then but I, I think you know what I mean and then your shelves will be obviously the same width as your back because again they're going to be enclosed so they'll be the same as your top and bottom so however many shelves you want you can have as many or as few as you want and you can space them where you like but like I say I'm going to space mine evenly so I've used masking tape here to join the side to the back and that way I can just do my lines straight across all three pieces. I haven't got to do each of them three times. And I'm going to turn it that way so I've got um, six pieces to insert and I've got 160 millimetres so always take off the thickness of your top bottom and shelves from your overall height and then divide what's left by how many shelves you're going to have. So I've got six pieces there, so that's nine millimetres in total. Take that from 160 is 151 divided by five is 30.2. So I'll use 30 millimetres for each shelf and then all those 0.2s that are left will be included in that bottom shelf, which will be slightly higher. So I'll start making my measurements from the top. So take into consideration the top piece 
30 millimetres, and I also mark out the thickness of the shelf and then I know where to do my next measurement from. Yeah, it's at the bottom there I've got 31 and a half and then each of the other shelves is 30. So then I take those measurements and I copy them over to the other side. Oops. Stick into my back surface. Like that and then turn that and draw the lines all the way across. And when I'm doing shelves, I just like to continue the little pencil mark onto the front edge of the sides. And that helps when you're lining up the shelves. Like that. I can then remove the tape and begin construction. So a really simple construction, so I'm just going to speed through this part. So just attach the side to the outer edge of the back piece, attach the top piece on the inside edge of the joint pieces and then work your way down. Apply glue to the edges and attach your remaining side piece and then secure with masking tape until the glue has dried. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to completely dry and I left mine dry in overnight, you can remove the masking tape and then I've just been around and sanded this on all edges and I also like to sand it face down so that you've got a nice flush front edge and no overhanging shelves. And now I want to go and try this into place inside the cupboard. So that fits in there nicely. And although you can't see from this angle, there's a little bit of gap in along the right hand edge. But once I've actually dressed the shelves and come to fit the sort of under stair wall into place, then I'll actually glue the shelves against the right hand side of the wall. So you won't see that gap in along there. But really pleased with how that looks. So now I'm ready to paint the shelves. And I'm using the same cream paint for the shelves as I used for the outer walls of the cupboard and for the walls of the entrance hall. And it's nice and light so that will give us a bit more light actually inside the cupboard and as a background to the sort of bits and pieces that we put on the shelves. So have a think about that as well rather than using sort of a, a dark wood dye which you'll probably normally find inside cupboards and things. So the shelves have had one generous coat of paint and whilst that's drying we can make a start on the bits and pieces for the shelves. So before I start on a project like this I always like to go through my boxes of bits and see what I've got that I can actually use in the project. And it might be things I've just got in my collection or it might be things that I've made before and then ended up not using, like this cardboard box which I made for the messy garden shed and then ended up not using, so I can put that in there on a shelf. The suitcases are probably going to be too big for the shelves, well they will be too big for the shelves, but I thought I might be able to stand those off to one side, even if we get a little glimpse just of half of them or something. I've got a little bag there that I could hang on the back of the door. And I also thought the little carrier bag roll might look nice on the back of the door. I've got here one of the little clocks that we did for the miniature painting tutorial. I thought that might be quite nice in there, maybe a, an old clock that stopped working. I've got here um, a lampshade, an old Tiffany lampshade from a lamp that I, I used the base for another project. I thought that might look quite nice, add a bit of colour in there as well. And then I made this a while ago, a little um, cleaning box. I can't remember, remember what I made that for now, but again, I ended up not using it. And then here I've got some really nice tools that I bought at some point. And some of them are a little bit big and a little bit out of scale, but I think some will look really nice just tucked inside that box. 
there's a couple of screwdrivers there as well which would actually be really gigantic screwdrivers but they, they might look okay in there so we could maybe do a little display in there with some little tools and then in that same little set I had a couple of um, little spray paint bottles I don't even know where I got those from so that's those I've got a couple of um, brass candlesticks here that I've had in my collection back from the early days really I think I got those from Aztec miniatures and I can't really see myself using them in the house I think they're a little bit um, traditional for the style of the house so I th think they might look quite nice in there maybe laid down on a shelf or something and then I've also got some little candles as well that were left over from the kitchen remember I did a little pot of candles on that back table in there so I've got those just an old newspaper thought I could line a shelf with and maybe make a pot of paint to go on it or something and we'll have a little decorating shelf I've got here some lovely games and I don't know if I'll use these in the cupboard or not because they they wouldn't be seen very well I've got a little Rubik's cube there as well so I might use those somewhere else in the house where they'll be a little bit more on view but I don't know, we might have a little space we can put them in and sort of stand them at the back of a shelf so we can actually see what they are so that was those I've got some little wooden crates so I've just chosen a, a light coloured one there and a couple of little baskets again could fill one or both of those with some bits and, and put that on a shelf some little cardboard boxes again that I've made for other projects and not used a shoe box there as well and then that little um, iron which again is oops is a little bit big for 12th scale but I thought we could maybe put that in there or even use it as a door stop when we prop the little door open or something like that so quite a few bits to be getting on with so once the paint had completely dried I gave the shelf unit a gentle sand and now I'm going to make a start on displaying it so I'm going to begin with this sort of central shelf here and I'm going to have the toolbox on there and then a few little car related bits I'm going to start by lining the shelf with an old newspaper and this was just an image that I found on Google and just resize that in Adobe Photoshop and I've shown that technique um, a, a couple of times on the channel I think I did quite a few miniatures for my messy shed so do have a scroll back through the playlists and I also actually did a video of how to create your own food packets and things like that and in that I go into a bit of detail about resizing images using Adobe Photoshop and then using pieces of dowel and scraps of wood to wrap the labels around and I'll be doing a lot of that sort of thing again with this project but to start with I'm just going to begin with this newspaper and I just sort of crumpled it up in my hand to make it look a little bit more old and worn so I'm gluing it together just so that it will sit nice and flat on the shelf and then I'm going to apply a bit of glue to the back And I know it sounds awful but there's a there's a picture of a man on the back who I don't really like the look of so I'm going to glue him down <laughs> I don't want him staring at me every time I open the the door to the uh, understairs cupboard so I'm gluing him down sorry <laughs> whoever you are and I'm going to put that on the shelf bit of an angle when I'm doing things like this I, I don't like to be neat even though in real life I, I wouldn't have things at angles or looking messy I like things to be neat but in my doll's house I do actually enjoy making a bit of a mess I suppose so put that on there like that I'm just having I'm, I've put it a little bit too forward so I'm just crumpling it up which actually looks quite nice and pushing it back a little bit in there I'll leave that to dry for a moment and then I've got this little box that I made a little while ago and I'll tell you the measurements of that really easy to make so it's 30 millimeters wide which is an inch and a quarter and 20 millimeters deep so three quarters of an inch and it's just as if you were making any sort of box or drawer 
and then I cut that separate piece of wood to go inside, shaped it into a curve and then used a drill to drill out the little holes. So you just do three drill holes side by side and then you can put a little um, tiny piece of sandpaper in and just sand that out. So that's super easy to make and then added a bit of um, wood dye. I think that looks really nice. I'm going to use that as a toolbox. Originally made it as a little cleaning box. Now for the tools, I'm not going to use my glue but I'm going to use some tacky wax. I haven't actually got a lot left in this pot but I should have enough just to display these tools. And that's A because they're metal so they'll be difficult to glue using my wood glue. And also because they're sort of quite odd shapes and I don't just want to glue them all straight down. I'm going to have them all at sort of different angles. So I'm just taking out a little bit of the um, tacky wax and this tacky wax is really good stuff. Especially if you don't like gluing things down permanently. And I know from, um, you know, I've asked the question before, what, what do you like to do and had a lot of comments. And it really just depends. Some people like to glue it down permanently, as I do. Others prefer to be able to change things up. So we'll just use tacky wax that they can remove them again. And although I'm getting to the end of this pot now, I've had this for easily 15 years. And that's, and that's just coming to an end now. And just because you use a little bit at a time it really does last for a long time so I've just put a few sort of separate little chunks in the bottom there I'm going to try and push it in with my cocktail stick but I'll actually flatten it down when I put the tools in I'll spread that bit out in there so I might need a little bit more for other things I don't want to use it all up yet put that out in there and then I just really want to display these tools in there now when the toolbox is actually on the shelf, and I'm going to have it at an angle, again I wouldn't do that in real life, I'd just have it sitting nice and straight on the shelf, but just to give it a bit of a you know, more interesting look, I'll have it at an angle. So if you look back into the back of the shelf, it's quite dark back there and you can't really see it that well, so I'm going to sort of stand some things up in the back one to create um, a little bit of light back there. So let's start with these pliers. And I think I mentioned earlier that these pieces are, are probably a bit too large for 12th scale. I mean, if you measure those 30 millimeters, so that's an inch and a quarter. So they would be 15 inches long in real life. And that would be far too long for pliers, which are probably about six or seven inches long. But I think just for the purposes of this project, I think I can get away with it. So I'm going to have those stood like that right at the back. And I think that creates a sort of interesting little area at the back there. Now I really like these hammers. So I'm going to have those at the front edge. And again, things probably wouldn't stand up like this in real life. It's probably not a, a natural way for things to, to fall. But you can get away with it in miniature. I think that yes things wouldn't you know sit like that but that's how I want it so <laughs> you can do that in your doll's house things don't have to be quite as boring as real life you can add a little bit of magic again these screwdrivers would be super large but I think for a, a sort of car toolbox that will work I'll stand that one there oops black and red one I just threw over there. I'll put that in there as well. In fact, I might need a little bit more tacky wax for this front section, so I'll, I'll get it on the end of the screwdriver there. That one there as well. And another little hammer, and I'll have that one in the back, and I'm going to have that one facing that way, just because we've already got one facing that way. I'm just getting a little bit of the tacky wax onto the end of the hammer there. I've actually gone behind those pliers, but that's okay. That looks quite good. So when you're 
doing a little display like this, you want things going in all different directions so that it adds a bit of interest. If you were just to lay them in there all in the same direction, it would look a little bit boring. So try and sort of um, display things, you know, have them all higgledy-piggledy rather than all nice and straight and lined up. And I've got a couple of um, adjustable spanner or a wrench, I think they're called. So I get confused with the names of these sort of tools. If ever I'm sort of down in Matt's garage and he'll say, oh, pass me that 12-inch ratchet spanner or whatever, and I'll, I won't have a clue what he's on about. <laughs> End up handing him the wrong thing. And there's another one of those there. They're quite nice. So I'll put all that at the back as well. I'm just leaning on that one. So... That would probably just fall into the edge of the crate there, but I'm going to have it just sort of slightly propped up on the first one. Again, just to create a little bit of interest there. And then got this little, and this isn't part of this set because it's like a little plastic spanner. <laughs> so I'm going to have that at the front and sort of just standing up. As if it's just sort of standing up in there. I can't get that in, but... Try and stand that there then. Must have it leaning against that hammer. And then because I've got a little bit of space in the centre there, I've got some pieces of fabric here that I thought might fit. So I've just got, in fact I'm going to be using that on the decorating shelf. That's like a bit of a, um, a linen fabric. So I'll put that to one side. But I found this gold and I think that might look a little bit like a chamois leather. So it's it's cotton, so it's totally the wrong sort of fabric, but I think the colour looks quite similar to a chamois leather. Or Matt takes the mickey out of me, because when I first saw the word chamois, I called it a chamois leather. And he never lets me live that down. So a chamois leather there, and I'll just cut that into a square and tuck it in the centre there. And then I've also got like a, a waffle fabric here, and I thought that would make a really nice um, sort of cloth for wiping over the car or the windscreen. So I'm going to have that on the shelf as well. And I've got a white piece here that I'm going to make into a bit of a dirty rag. And we'll have that maybe hanging over the front of the box as well. So let me cut these into some sort of more manageable sized pieces. So I just cut a little white square of fabric there and just glued it into this sort of triangle shape and then this sort of dirt on here which I thought would look like oil I just actually wiped this around a little tray of wood dye that I was using earlier today just over the sort of dried on wood dye on the side of my little pot and that's created quite a nice effect on there so I want to glue that in like that and then pull it over the front so I'll apply a bit of glue to the back and I, I had a go at you trying to use a felt tip pen to create the oil, but it looked too, you know, too solid. And I wanted something that looked quite blurry. <laughs> use a better word. So if I just... I want it sort of sticking on the inside like that. I use my tweezers to glue that against the inside of the box there. I also glued the little chamois leather in the middle there and then I've glued the toolbox onto the shelf just using my Gorilla Wood glue and I've put that at a bit of an angle and the reason I didn't record that is because I thought I was recording and then looked down and my camera wasn't on so but that's all I did was just glue that bit into place and then glue the toolbox in and I'm the glue isn't dry yet so I've got time to move it about and I just want it so it's at an angle and that sort of hammer is coming out over the edge of the shelves there. I think that looks quite nice. You get more interest from all the different sort of heights and different angles in there. So then I've just made a little roll of cloth, like a little roll of J cloth and I just begin by rolling that around a piece of cocktail stick. So it's 20 millimetres high, so three quarters of an inch high. Cut a strip of the cloth, roll it around and then just glue it into place with a little bit of a 
corner folded over there again to add a little bit of interest so I'm going to glue that into place towards the back there just so there's no sort of clear areas at the back so that can just actually sit just in there They're nice and light so it adds a bit of light into the back of what would be a sort of dark shelf and then I've got this little um, oil can thing here which was again part of my collection it's got an indented bottom there so I'm going to use another little bit of tacky wax on the bottom of that and the tacky wax is overhanging the bottom of the oil can but as long as that's at the back and you can't see the tacky wax from the front that's okay it's when you sort of put too much wax on and you can actually see that as part of the display that can actually ruin a really nice display so never use too much tacky wax just enough to hold it in place but so that you can't see it and I'm supporting the shelf there as I press that down with my thumb underneath important to do otherwise you might end up splitting your your shelves and then I've got here a couple of labels and again just found these images on Google Images, resized them to the height and added a background to correspond with the colour of the bottle. And then for the WD-40 which has a red lid I actually cut the end off an old ruined paintbrush because I needed a, a bit of dowel that was less than five and more than three which are the only sort of dowels I've got. And this is about four millimetres so that worked really well and there I've even got then a nice um, little curved lid so I'm just going to glue that around there back to the Gorilla Wood glue I just want to leave a little tiny red border at the bottom as well so I'm trying to position it so I've got a little bit of red showing at the bottom I can just squeeze that paper together at the back and then snip that off and then I did uh, like a can of de-icer and I cut a piece of 3mm dowel and I just used pencil, coloured pencil to colour the top to use as a lid and again I'm just going to glue that around the dowel and there I've got a can of de-icer excuse me, there's the door so I just had a little play around and I couldn't quite get the cloths to sit right in that corner so I've made a little sleeve which says Maguire's microfiber towel that's a little car cleaning towel so I'm sort of going to stand that over in that corner let me put a little bit of glue on the bottom there I needed something to fill that area so that works quite nicely the cloth sort of folded or rolled up in there didn't quite look right so I think that looks quite good and then I also made an extra little um, bottle and that's a little screen wash auto glim screen wash and I again used my pencil just to colour the top of the wood white just wrapped it around a piece of 1.5 sheet wood and then I've made a tiny little lid from a cocktail stick so I'm going to put that on that shelf as well but I'll start with the tallest thing first Always a good idea to have your taller items at the back. Again, so you can obviously see the smaller things in front, but also it creates that sort of bit of height. <laughs> it just reminds me how much I love doing little things like this. As much as I love making the furniture, as soon as I sort of get stuck into a project like this, I think, oh, I really enjoy doing this. And I actually can't wait to get back to the kitchen cupboard. If you remember, I only got half of that filled with food. So I need to do some more labels and packets and jars and things to go in there, but that will be another episode. I'm just going to leave those bits of glue there for now, and then once the things have dried into place a little bit, I can come in with my cocktail stick and, and get rid of the excess there. And this final little bottle here of screen wash. hold of that the wrong way around let me turn that round actually just go 
go and just stand that in there beside it. And let's go at a little bit of an angle again. I think that looks quite good. So I'll let that dry for a moment and then remove that excess glue. And then I'm happy with that shelf. And I think we can move on to the next one. OK, so I now want to move on to the next shelf up and I want to have this as a sort of laundry shelf. So I've made quite a few little bits and pieces down here. And I also want to use this little basket that I already had in my collection. And I'm going to use that for some kitchen towels. So I've made three of those and they're really easy to make. Just made a little sort of grey cardboard tube in the middle and then wrapped round a piece of tissue. And I use tissue rather than actual kitchen towel because the kitchen towel tends to look a little bit too chunky and out of scale and tissue is nice and thin and I'm just going to have those in the basket. So I'll start by gluing those in and then I'm going to glue the basket actually onto the shelf. I just want to stand that one up a little bit more so you can actually see it. That one there like that. And I'm going to glue that into place at that side of the shelf. Get underneath and just push that down. And then I've made another of those little J cloth rolls here. And that was really just to fill a space at the back and create a bit of colour back there. So I like to, when I'm displaying, I like to look at it as a sort of triangle or a pyramid rather and work from the back with the highest things and come forwards. So I'm going to pop that in there and then I've got here a box of bold washing powder and again that's just the label glued around a piece of wood which I've coloured purple using coloured pencils and I've done the same thing with all, all of the boxes that I've created. I'll just put that washing powder there. And I just actually want to have a little um, practice with some of these pieces before I actually glue them in. Is that staying in focus there? So I've got there some Glade air freshener, just because I sort of wanted a spray bottle in there or something a little bit taller. Some Calgon and then I've got here some Lenore tumble dry sheets and I again glued the label around a piece of wood which I coloured in blue and then that's just a little piece of tissue stuck on there. They normally come in the little sort of box that you can um, you know you just pull them out and I'd like that to be stood at the front so might have to move some of these things around and that looks quite nice actually like that and then I've got two bottles here of um, fabric softener and my again I've wrapped the label around a piece of wood and I shaped the wood so I made some sort of shoulders at the top there and then the lid and on this one it's gone a little bit wonky is a end of a cocktail stick which I shaped and coloured in again with the pencil. So I just see if I can actually get both of those in there and if not I'll just use one of them. So I've got the orange one there and then a really nice pink one there. And actually I think I will be able to get both of those in. Let me take that all out again and then I can glue it all into place. And these sort of narrow nose tweezers are really useful when you're doing things like this. Especially if you've got big fingers like I have. I think I'll put that that side and then have the softeners in that gap just to create a, a sort of a filler for that gap in the back there. So the orange one at the back so rather like painting a scene, you're sort of just building it from back to front. And put that at a little bit of an angle as well, so that you don't notice my wonky lid as much. 
and then this pink one which I really like at the front there like that fill as much of that space as I can and then go down like that so that's the next shelf done so I actually just reached in there with my tweezers and moved that J cloth roll over more into that gap and I think that looks a bit better now it, look, it looks a bit fuller so I now want to move down to the second shelf up so this shelf is going to be a bit of a mixture I've got some dog biscuits a little packet of doggy treats there toilet rolls and they're made exactly the same as the kitchen towel but just eight and a half millimeters high and the maximum sort of diameter you want those is nine millimeters or three eighths of an inch I've got a roll of bin liners there again just a strip of bin liner wrapped around a cocktail stick just to make them easier to roll I've got some fire lighters there um, I think that was some scotch guard little tin of Brasso, some polish and then I've just cut a strip of duster and stuck them all together there like a little pile of dusters. So I want to start over on the left with the dog biscuits and then I'll separate them from the smelly stuff with the toilet rolls. Into place. And then I've got the little gravy bite here. And again these are all done the same just by printing off a label and then wrapping it around a piece of wood that I've coloured using coloured pencil and I've got this little packet of treats here making sure they're the right way up actually <laughs> can't tell now because they're so small and I just wrapped a piece of paper around another little bit of paper just to make it look as though there's something inside a packet of schmackos Woody likes a nice schmacko. Woody likes all dog treats. <laughs> They're like that. And then I'm going to have these toilet rolls. And again, in real life, these would be stored in a packet. But I just think it looks so much more interesting having them loose there. So I'm going to do three in a row. And then I'll put one on top. I've just misshapen that one. When you're doing something like this, it's a lot of fun coming up with ideas of things that you can put on your shelf or on your shelves. And it's a really good idea just to go and have a look in your own cupboards and see what you've got in there. I'm going to put that one on top like that to create a little bit of height. I'm just going to lay the bin roll liner next to those and then I'll have another little practice run so I'll probably have the little pile of dusters at the front and that little tiny bottle of Brasso will go in there and I know that doesn't stand up so there's no point me trying to put it there so then I'll have those at the back probably actually put the fire lighters in at the side there like that to fill that space and I know my hand keeps getting in the way but it's really difficult getting in to such a small area without sort of getting in the way I hope you can see clearly what I'm doing and that's then supposed to be a tin tin of polish there spray polish And then that little tin of Brasso. And I'll link to that other packets video that I did at the end of this video. Where I show you how to print all the labels and everything. I think I'm sure I've said that before. Okay, so there's a little sort of storage shelf, I suppose. I think that looks really good as well. So on the bottom shelf here I want to do a sort of decorating supplies shelf and I'm taking inspiration from my messy shed and I really love the little shelf and unit that I did in there. 
with all the paint brushes. I've got paints, varnishes, poly filler, some wood dye on there. Just loads of little accessories. And then over in that other corner, I've got some masking tape and electrical tape, box of um, nails, a box of screws on the window ledge there. So I'm going to do similar things to that and I'll use these final two shells for those things. So decorating on the bottom and then we'll have a general sort of household bits and pieces shelf at the top there. So I've cut out a few bits. I've got some newspapers here which I'm going to fold and stack on the bottom shelf. I've got a little um, glass jar here and I've just stuck a tiny little label on there saying white spirit. Let me um, focus in on that a bit better. So I just printed that off using a handwriting font in um, Microsoft Excel and I used, just used a font number five. I think it was called Bradley Hand or something like that. I'm going to have some paintbrushes stood in there. I was trying to make a little lid for it um, using some gold foil, but it didn't look quite right. So I'll just have that open as if it used to have white spirit in it and a few brushes. I've got a little blue box that I found in my bits box. So we'll have that stood on there to create a bit of height. I've made a little metal pot for some more brushes there using the What's that part of the paintbrush called? Feral or something, isn't it? So using one of those and I've just cut it down to size and then I've just dipped it into some glue. I'm just trying to create a bottom in there. So when that glue dries, that will create like a little bottom to the pot so that nothing's going to fall out. But I'll, I'll glue it into place on the shelf anyway. Bit of sponge and then I've got some more um, labels here. Paint and wood dye and I'm going to have a drill in a box. And then a few more labels here, so some boxes and some labels that I'll fit around some dowel. A polyfiller label there, I'll do a similar little polyfiller tube to the one I did in the shed. A little box of carpet tacks, a sandpaper packet, and I'll use a real piece of sandpaper in the centre there and then wrap the packet around it. So I'll start making up most of these things and then I'll come back when I'm ready to display them on the shelf. But the reason I won't go through it all again is because most of these I did do in that messy shed video. Now I'm going to link to the food packet video at the end of this one because in that one I talk about actually resizing the labels um, using Adobe Photoshop so I think that will be quite helpful for you but do have a look out for this um, messy shed playlist and there's one where we sort of concentrate on the decorating table. You might also like the craft shed um, accessories video because I do some similar things in there as well. And once you know how to print these labels um, and downsize them and things, it's so handy for things like this. If you imagine if you were buying all of these little bits and pieces, you'd be looking at a pound per, per item. And though there are some things that you you can't make, um, like the little spray bottles, that would be quite difficult to sort of shape out of wood and make it look realistic. So it's a good idea to look out for sort of miniatures like that, pre-made miniatures. But just for things like packets and paper boxes and things, I really do urge you to have a go at making them yourself. Save yourself quite a few bob. Okay, so I'll, I'll get on with sort of folding all of these boxes and packages and then I'll be back. So here are all my pieces made up and I've just got a few little boxes of um, carpet tacks and wall plugs left over that I'll use on the top shelf. And I've actually done a paper template to the size of the bottom shelf so that I could practice my layout here. And now it's just a question of gluing all of this into place. So I'm just using that little blue box there just to give it a bit of height on that side and then I've um, glued all my newspapers together in a little stack and before I fold the newspapers I crumple them up in my hands just to give them that sort of aged look. I wrapped the sandpaper label actually around a real piece of sandpaper. I'm just going to glue that into place on top.
And then I've just cut a little piece of sponge here. Stick that back there again just to give a little bit of height in there. And some of the things that you might have taken a little while making aren't even going to be that visible. But just having them there really does add some lovely details. So with my plan I can now work backwards and I know that it will all fit where I want it to. So I just wrapped the cordless drill label around a piece of wood. It's going to go at the back there. I'm not sure I can even get my finger in to push that down. Let me find my tweezers. I'll just go back a little bit further than that. I just know it wasn't completely at the back there. And because that's a nice brightly coloured box, that just gives a nice bit of colour at the back as well in the shadows. And then with my paint tins, I wrapped the label around a piece of dowel and then I've just used some aluminium sheet and made a lid out of that, just glued that on top. Again, using my Gorilla Wood glue. As one surface is wood, that sticks quite nicely. And my jar actually was a little bit too big, but I still wanted to use it, so I just put a couple of larger paint brushes in there, and I'm going to glue that towards the back. Tin of furniture paint there. I just wanted to include some smaller tins as well, again, just to add some various heights in there. And I've got the little pot of brushes. You can see my glue dried to form a base in there. Try not to press too hard on there because that is just fine aluminium, that pot. I don't want to bend it out of shape. Tin of varnish there. And a little packet of polyfiller and I've just glued the paper label around a little bit of dowel to make the lid. I can go in there and then finally a little tin of wood dye. Again just glued the label around a piece of sheet wood and then made a little lid using a cocktail stick, the end of a cocktail stick, and that goes just in there. <laughs> that fits in really nicely. So there we have another completed shelf. Lots of interesting little bits on there and lots of different heights as well. So I made a couple of cardboard boxes here which I'm going to use as a backdrop to the top shelf and then I want to put some brown parcel tape around them. So I've stuck a piece of parcel tape to my cutting mat and then I've just used my craft knife to cut some 4mm strips. Like that, and then I can use those to actually stick around the boxes. So I'll start with this one. And again, this is one of those fiddly little techniques but it does add a really nice detail to otherwise a sort of plain cardboard box. So just stick it around as you would a full sized box. Like that. And then you can take your craft knife and actually split open the tape. And that it looks as though it's actually been opened at some point. And I don't want to open actually open out the flaps because I want to stand a few things on top of there. But what I have got here, a little address label, which again I've printed off using that handwriting font. And then I've just crumpled it up, ripped off a corner, turned another corner over, and I'm going to stick that on the front of the box.
and I did all of this in more detail in that um, messy shed video and in the craft room video actually had a couple of boxes in there I think so I'll glue that into place on there and then I've also done the other little box and I've put a little fragile sticker on that one I used a font called Stencil for that and a font size 7 and that one I've sort of opened up those top flaps OK, let's start gluing these into place and I'm going to glue some of these little boxes in front of this one and even though these are so small that you can't really identify what they are try to choose labels that are sort of lots of different colours and sizes You can just about see the word wall plugs on there. <laughs> so tiny. And this one's so tiny, I can hardly see which way round it goes. I think the little orange stripes were at the top, so I'll glue it that way. Hope for the best. Really should put my reading glasses on when I'm doing things like this. <laughs> One can go at the front there. So then I had the thought of having this clock standing on there as though it's sort of a clock that's no longer working. But you know, we don't want to get rid of it yet. So I'm going to glue that there. And I do like this clock, but I don't think I'd actually be using it anywhere else in the house. So I will put it in here. Oh, it's a bit heavy for the tweezers. that at a bit of an angle there and I just want to make some more little things just to fill up these spaces and put on the top of the box there so I'm going to have a go at making an extension cable and actually happened to wake up about four o'clock in the morning and this idea came to me then so I'm not quite sure if it's going to work but I've just started with 1.5 millimeter sheet wood I've done something there that resembles a little plug and then I've just done a strip of wood here and I just gently beveled over the edges and I'm going to use my scribe now to mark out the little plug sockets let me move in a little bit closer so I'm just sort of going to go along like that just do some little grooves in the wood I didn't even sort of really measure this out, I've just done it by eye really. <laughs> it's a bit low down with that one. Now if I was making this probably to be in more prominent display I'd spend a little bit more time on it. But as it's just going to sort of be tucked on that top shelf I think that will be okay, so just indentations of the plug holes, a little plug will sit in there, in fact I wonder if I should plug that in, um, actually that might be a good way of attaching the cable if I plug actually plug that in, so I'm going to do a little groove in the back of the plug for the wire to sit into a little bit of the wood off there and then I'm not sure how long that should be I'll cut it probably I don't know about six or seven inches long just snip that off and then the other end of that I won't go in into the back of there so I'll do another little groove there So I'm going to sort of wrap this around before I glue it into place, actually get it into shape. And this is actually um, Doll's House lighting wire. Put quite a bit in my little bits drawer. Okay, let's 
let's try and glue these into place. Where's my tweezers? I'm using the tweezers there to press that wire into place. I'm not really confident that that's going to stay, so I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape, a tiny little bit, just to hold that into place, and that won't be seen because that's on the underside. actually used, used my washi tape might have been a little bit stronger but we'll see how we go with this press that down now let's curl that above the actual socket there that sort of really thin wire running through this cable which allows you to shape it Actually, let me tidy this wire up. That looks a little bit neater. And what I'm actually going to do is do it in that end one because I made a bit of a mess with the little marks there. And I think I'll use a tiny little bit of tape again just to hide under that plug. I'm not sure this will be strong enough, but I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of tape over the wire there. And then we can glue the plug down. I might need to dot a little bit more paint on that little strip of wood that I pulled off, or underneath it rather. There. Plug it in. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad, does it? So that's sitting up there on top of that box and I've just got this little roll of masking tape which I did want to lay down but I've made it a little bit too big so I'm going to stand it up against that box there. And then I've just found it from our cupboard a little box of um, light bulbs which I'm going to scan in and scale down. And that will be the final little thing on here. I'll just stand that in there. I think I'm trying to stand it the wrong way around to where I put the glue. I can go there and then I'll just go and scan in this box of light bulbs. So that's the top shelf finished. And now I want to have a go at making a duster for the back of the door. So I've just been into our airing cupboard and trimmed some of these nylon strips from the extendable duster that hangs on the back of our airing cupboard door. And I'm going to use a cocktail stick for the main handle. So the overall length is about two and a half inches or 64 millimetres. So the actual sort of bristle part is going to be 25 millimetres long and then the handle will be 38 millimetres long or an inch and a half. So I'm just going to trim the point from one end like that and I'll use that for the bristle end and then I can trim the point from the other end and now this is the length that I need it to be and then I just want to round over what will become the top of the handle like that and then I'm going to paint this white so I'm using this little hearth to weigh those pieces down whilst I'm doing other things, otherwise you'll find that they just blow away. And my paint is now dry and I held onto the cocktail stick at this end because I know that end's going to be covered so there's no need to paint the entire thing. So I've got an inch at the bottom here for the actual uh, bristles, nylon bristles. So I've got three colours, so 25 millimetres divided by three, so I'm going to do eight millimetres per colour. 
And just like our um, extendable duster, the pink is at the bottom, so I'm going to start with that. And I think this is just going to get really messy, but I'm just going to glue as many bristles around the cocktail stick as I can, and then probably another layer if I can, just to make it nice and thick and bushy. So I'm going to start by actually trimming the bristles to size. So first of all, I'm going to trim across the top just to straighten them off. And I'm going to do it over another area of my desk so they're not all in my workspace. Just straightening those off. Like that. A bit of a loose one there. And then I want eight mil or eight millimeters actually showing. So I'm going to do about ten millimeters. And then the next layer can just overhang by a couple of millimetres. So I just snip those off like that. And then I'm just going to tuck those back underneath. As I know what will happen, I'll sneeze and they'll be gone. Just really carefully lay those there like that. Now I know sort of when I'm doing things like this, people suggest mask using masking tape and tying them together. But it's just as easy to do them loose like this. If you start putting masking tape around them, they're all going to be sticking to it and you're going to get into a right old mess. But obviously, you know, do what works for you. And then I just want to, in fact, I'll just start by putting the cocktail stick right into the little pile. We'll see how many we can get to stick on there. So I'm just sort of gathering them all around the cocktail stick and then I've actually got my um, washi tape here which is a rice paper tape and it comes in all sorts of colours and patterns and it's really sticky as well it's a really good craft tape and I was going to just use this to go around the top layer of bristles but thinking about it I could actually put a little bit around each layer and then it will be covered with the next layer so that might work better than just trying to do another sort of layer of glue around the outside. The yellow bristle straying in there. And that's actually quite a nice amount which is sticking on there and then we'll trim the bottom into a nice rounded shape as well. So I'm going to cut a little bit of tape now and I'll probably cut this width into three and we'll stick that around the top of those bristles. So I've also just done a little pencil line around the handle there just to show where the bristles should come up to so I know where to put my next layers. And then I've cut a little bit of tape off here and this is probably far too long. I actually just cut the um, tape in, in half lengthways. Stick that around there like that. And if you wanted to use um, t tiny feathers, you could do that and use this same same method. I've never done this before, so I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> so let's put the next line of glue on. So I've now got up to that pencil line for the next two layers. I'll put it on the tape, but I'll also continue it onto the cocktail stick. I just realised I've put my glue on before I've actually cut the um, bristles, so I'm just going to lodge that in there. And now I want to cut the yellow ones. And again, I'll trim these off in another area of my desk. Pop those back there. Lay those on there again, because that worked quite nicely last time. And then we want to go, I think I want about 8mm of the pink overhanging, so let's go there. <laughs> Could have probably gone down a bit lower. Just squeeze those around. I'm actually going to bring that next piece of tape in now, rather than letting go of this again and losing some of the bristles. Put that around there. And 
pulling that nice and tight. And my um, camera, my battery light has just flashed up, so that's a good chance just to leave that now to take a little bit, and then I'll come back and do the final layer. Okay, so I've cut the blue this time. I only want to put the glue on now up to the little line. I might just go a little bit over it so that they're sticking to the cocktail stick as well. And I've cut the blue ones a little bit shorter. going to turn it around make sure they're all around the other side as well it's a good idea to keep your fingers clear of glue as well because the glue can tend to pull the things off again so I've lost a few there but that still looks quite good what I am going to do is just trim around that top if I can get my scissors in there because I don't want them to be too high up the handle. Put those into place and then get the tape. Stick that nice and tightly around the top. Like that. So I've lost a bit of my handle. I could have gone further down the cocktail stick with some of those but I'm quite pleased with how that looks and then we'll hang it with the nicest edge facing forwards on the back of the door. So I'm just going to um, trim this up now, just tidy it up, make it look a little bit better. And I'm just going to trim, I should go and get my, my smaller scissors really, but I'm just going to trim around the end of the blue there. And these do get a little bit raggy looking so don't worry if you've got bits sticking out. And I want to sort of trim the pink into a more of a rounded shape. Get rid of some of those stray bristles there. And there's our duster. We now need to make something to actually hang this on. So I've made a really simple little hook rail for the back of the door and I actually brought the wall and door back in to measure it up so that will sit across there like that. And to make that I've just used a piece of 1.5mm sheet wood and I bevelled over each edge and then I've made the hooks using cocktail sticks. So I rounded over the end of the cocktail stick as I did for the handle of the extendable duster. I've just glued those into place on there and then I'm going to paint them the same colour as the door so using the natural calico. So whilst the hook rail is drying I've just used a piece of white cotton and I've secured it into place with another little strip of the washi tape on the end of the duster just so that I can actually hang it onto the hook. So my little hook rail is now dry so I'm going to glue that into place. And I was thinking about having maybe, I don't know, an apron or an overall or something hanging on the back of the door. And that's still something I'd like to do, but I'm going to um, just finish off these few pieces and get the um, cupboard in place. And then finish off this episode because I think it's going to be a really long one. But I certainly might come back and make like an apron or an overall or something to hang on the third hook here. Press that into place. I'm only doing that by eye, so I hope that's straight. Let me get my smaller rule and just measure to the bottom there. 93. 93 and a half. So come down a little bit there. And I think you find that, I'm sure you do as well, that the more you work with miniatures, that you just get to know or you get really good at judging measurements by eye 
I've gotten quite good at it over the years. I can sort of more or less look at a, a scrap of wood and tell what size it is, if it's going to be the right size for what I need. Get rid of that glue from around the outside edge. Okay, let's try hanging a few pieces in place. <laughs> I think that looks really good. And I've actually glued those into place as well, just put a little bit of bit of glue on the back of each piece there and stuck it actually against the door so they're not in danger of falling off. And what I actually want to do as well is glue the shelf unit to the inside of this wall. Now I was going to wait until I fitted all the rest of the skirting and coving but there's no need really to wait until then. So I'm going to get this into place now and that will sit right along that edge of the door strip there. Let's just hold that there and have a look from the other side. And that's what we'll see on the inside. And I think that looks really nice, really effective. And as you can see, some of it you can't um, actually see very clearly in there. We'd have to go around into the um, dining room and open those double doors to look in. But I really like that. I just like that there's sort of lots of little hidden details. I love that in a doll's house. Okay, so let's get that glued into place and then we can actually go and put this whole thing back into the doll's house. So that's now glued into place and I've secured it with masking tape. And that's actually masking tape which I could leave in place. And there is the completed understairs shelf unit. And I'm really pleased with that. It looks so good looking in from here and you have to get quite low down to see it all and move your head around and I like that when I'm showing people around the doll's house. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and that you've picked up lots of tips from all those little bits and pieces that we've made. So that's it for today and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs>